recording overloaded. What the hell? Oh, well, oh, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, a little bit of a glitch there. I just, that, uh, when you heard me say encoding overloaded, that's something I only get when I have too much stuff going on when streaming. That came up the moment I hit the record button. So I wonder what the hell is going on with my computer. Um, uh, but anyway, um, uh, but once again, good morning, everybody. And, uh, I gotta make, uh, an adjustment here. Hold on. Okay, so, um, uh, this is, this is, uh, one, this is cast time once again, and, um, for the music, this came up on my, this came up on my, uh, YouTube recommendations. <laughs> I, it just came out of freaking nowhere of all things. I think it was because, uh, either yesterday or the day before, I was playing, a, I was playing a Stoner Rock compilation, so the algorithm kind of kicked in and gave, and, uh, gave me this. Um, I listened to a little tiny bit of this, and it, so far, from what I heard, it's instrumental, instrumental music, so perfectly suited for something like this. Uh, Universal Hippies, <laughs> Dead Hippies Revolution, so... Let me sound test it. Okay, just... Might have to turn that down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stay close enough on that. But um, I do have a fair amount to talk about. So, and uh, on top of this, I've still got a, I still got other shit I gotta get taken care of this morning. So, I'm gonna try to keep this as brief as I can. So, but um, to start with, but to start with, I try to, I tried watching a gameplay or a gameplay movie of Silent Hill, the first one. Um, it, but, uh, it, I, I could, I didn't get very far in it. It, Silent Hill, um, kind of like Resident Evil, they, they're franchises that just go totally, completely over my head. I, I just don't get them. And I'd probably say the, uh, survival horror in general, it just, I don't get into. <clears throat> the only survival horror game I could think of right off the top of my head that I liked was a game called The Suffering. I mean, I like that game. Oh, and uh, before I continue, I'm gonna, I'm having a V8 energy drink, peach mango flavored. Oh, and I should probably say this too. No, I'm not, I'm not endorsing this or I'm not plugging my sponsors or anything like that. I mean, for crying out loud, man, I work at Walmart. Anyway, but just to let people know so that when you hear That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking a swill. Because it, is, it is some awesome stuff. But anyway, um, but what, uh, what got me into, what got me into trying to watch, uh, Silent Hill is, um, another channel I, I go to called Alpha Beta Gamer. Um, they, um, uh, they played a, they played a game that, or they demonstrated a game that was a um, Silent Hill, or a, a PS1 Silent Hill style game. And um, I know, and um, I noticed that it had, it had this, like the the head floating in the clock, the uh, floating in the sky, kind of hovering over you as you're as you're moving around. Um, I've seen a few other games. I've, I've seen a few other games that have this kind of kind of thing too, like this big old head watching over you, like this big, big head in the sky. But uh, this game had it too. I forgot the name of the game, by the way. Um, it's part. It said it was part Silent Hill, part Pokemon Go. So again, um, this kind of had me curious into uh, like watching like one of the one of the gameplay movies. Seeing this kind of, you know, seeing this kind of thing in that game, because this has got to be one. Of, this is one of very few things. There's one of very few things 
in games that really does creep me out. It's like having this floating head watching you. So it just, so again, I did, it just got me interested. Um, again, it was, uh, it was Silent Hill style, so I started off uh, watching some of this gameplay video, but couldn't get into it. Um, I watched the uh, Silent Hill timeline, but it, it made no reference to this at all. Now that, uh, now that I showed that, I can go ahead and get that out of there. Um, uh, but, but moving along, I, um, I finally, finally, I bought the book, Strong Towns. I finally remember to go on Amazon and get the damn thing. You know, I mean, it was, it was one of my inspirations in the playing city, Skylines. It's a, it's a Sim City game for 2015. But I, those, those that have, uh, those that have heard my other cast know what I'm talking about. I often make references to Strong Towns, uh, not just bikes. They have a, they have a Strong Towns video series on there. Um, do not eat O1. He's a, I think he's a civil engineer, possible city planner. And I think he was also a he was also a surveyor for public housing. But then um it it's not it, it sounded like he he's he mentions that as though he was like living a life of crime but living a life of crime but then then turned to the you know turned to the side of justice and now he's exposing all the evils and whatnot, so but these but uh these channels here were the ones that got me into City Skyline, so I'm just I'm so glad I finally bought the damn book. And, just, and um, reason I mean, reason why I just now got it is because I just now remembered to get the book. All this time I just keep forgetting. So, but um, as far as uh, City Skylines itself, I don't didn't I didn't play the game at all last night or this morning. So, um. Both, uh, both good and bad. I mean, bad because never got around to playing it, which is my, it, it's the game I'm currently playing right now. It's the game I'm currently liking. So, and then it's also, it's also good because uh, it just, it, it's one of those where uh, it's almost becoming too addictive where, to where I'm actually playing the crap out of it off stream as well as on stream. Whereas uh, no other game I can think of, I, I've ever done that for. I only play them when streaming. And plus, uh, I'm getting really sick and tired of the fact that uh, this game, unlike other games I've played, it takes a shit ton amount of time for it to start up, and to and to get it to shut down. It also takes a lot takes a long time, and it, throughout this entire process, it's jamming up my computer. I can hardly do anything else. Again, and again, no other game I have ever played, I, you know, I've ever had to go through this. You shut down, you know, you shut down a game and it, it shuts down just like that. Not this one. It's almost like I'm shutting down my damn computer. I gotta sit here, and, I gotta sit here and wait it out till it, you know, my computer shuts down completely. So, I've got a small feeling that uh. Uh, that uh, city skylines might be on the way out, just just on that alone. I have to say nothing of the fact that uh, that uh, the bigger my uh, I have the same problem. Uh, when playing Civilization 3 years ago and Civilization 2 on my PlayStation either my PlayStation or PlayStation 2 I can't remember which one but the bigger your city gets the more the game lags you know the more you know because it's have my it, my computer's having to process so much information it starts becoming more and more of a slideshow 
mean, because uh, when I when I especially when I stream it, because now I can't I can't set the game speed too fast, especially with my uh, city being as big as it is. Because if um uh, if I set it if I set the game speed to super fast, everything just jams up on it. So so that's another that's another issue I have with it. It get it gets to a point where it becomes so annoying to play. I actually want to start a new city now. Just you know, if only just to make the game fast once again. And even if I played it off stream, it's all excuse me, it's only going to postpone the inevitable. You know, but yeah, but uh, civilizations two and three, I had the same problem. The, uh, the bigger and more developed my civilization became, the longer the wait times between turns took. So, that was, that's, but that's another problem I'm having with City Skylines now. And I, and no, I should, and I, I shouldn't have to go out and buy a supercomputer just to make this game playable. So, I got, but the game, I got that game though, for those that don't know, from a guy named Jake Ryan. He, uh, he gifted me this game one day. So, and, uh, so it's, it's what, uh, it's what got me into playing it. But, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know how cool he'd be with me, um, uh, with me, uh, giving up the game though, or just playing it uh, off stream only. But that's all. But like I said, I'm in kind of a I'm in quite, kind of a quandary on this, because right now I don't. I'm pretty much like this with a lot of other games I play. But um, once I'm fixated on a game, I don't really care to play any others. I'm not the kind of person that can juggle numerous games simultaneously. I usually like to commit to just one, maybe two, like as kind of a sidearm. Kind of like a, kind of like what I did for when I first started streaming some odd years ago. It was uh, only Final Fantasy fourteen, and then like uh, twice a week, it was Pinball Arcade. That was my sidearm game. So, um, and now this part, this part of the cast, I am gonna get a little political here. So just to give everybody a heads up. Um, I checked out a new channel last night slash this morning called Mr. Beat. I subbed to him immediately. Um, he was, I mean, I've subbed to other other uh, political chow, political channels, but um, I I kind of got tired of the whole. And I, I you know, and the, you know, and technically I do agree with these people with what they say, but it's it's the old capitalism is evil and is destroying this country. We need to switch to socialism. Uh, I'm one of those. I'm like, eh. I mean, you ever looking? You ever looking up in a dictionary? I mean, socialism isn't really much better than capitalism. I mean, if you look at the textbook definition of it. Uh, but Mr. Beat, he said the same thing. If you if you look at their if you look at the dictionary definitions, socialism isn't on paper isn't really much better than capitalism. In a sense, it's actually worse. I mean, capitalism is actually defined by a, a system where, where uh, every you know everything you have or everything you produce is yours. You know, it's, it it acknowledges individual rights and property rights. Under socialism, everything you, everything you know, all of your property, physical and intellectual, is the property of society, quote unquote. You know, or to a, uh, you know, or the common good, or the community, that kind of thing. So, but Mr. Beat said the same thing too. I mean, if you look, if you look at the uh, actual definition, socialism really isn't that much better. Um, do I think we need it in the current situation we have right now? Yes. You know, I'm not a socialist and I'm not a communist. Um, if anything, I'm. I heard the I heard the term anarcho-capitalist. It seems like an interesting concept. I haven't looked into it, but it sounds like, 
or I'll I'll explain I'll explain this in a different way. I took a some time some time ago. I wish I had the results with me. I made the mistake of uh, deleting them, getting rid of them, to make room, for lack of a better phrase, so I can do this cast. But um, just to get rid of the extra tabs off my browser, that kind of thing. But um, I took a political compass test, and it came up Nelson Mandela. Or actually, let, let me let me let me correct myself. The the first time, a long time ago, when I took the political compass test. It actually came up as Bernie Sanders. I'm most closest to Bernie Sanders. But after uh, after checking out Strong Towns, uh, the Not Just Bikes channel, and Do Not Eat All One stuff, like he did a he did a series on he uses the game City Skylines to make a town called Franklin, and he would also talk politics and stuff as well. He would talk history. Uh, he also did another series like. Uh, the cities it, it, it's basically the it's an urban planning video series that he did like parking and urban renewal that kind of stuff but um after watching all of these um and then taking a taking a retaking the political compass test I'm actually uh, Nelson Mandela so now I'm more like him it So, but I mean, both, and I guess, uh, if you can, if you can, uh, for those that don't know what a political compass is, um, it's, it's four points. Oh, and, um, Mr. Beat said the same thing about this too. It's not a, it's not that accurate. It's just something you take, it's just something that you, it's just something that you take, take quickly. It, um, uh, it basically gives you the gist. Of where you stand politically, but it's not it's not that act it's not very accurate. But anyway, um the compass, the left, the le uh or left or west, the west uh yeah, the far west on the compass, you're um you're into oh how can I you're into public like um like socialism and communism. If you're on the far right of that compass, or if you're the farthest east, I think it's um, I think you're into capitalism. Um, I, yeah, but I, it, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of spitballing here. I think that was how it was put. If you're on the far right, you're into capitalism. If you're on the far left, you're into socialism and communism. If you're on the compass, if you're if you're way up north, you're basically a dictator or authoritarian. You're authoritarian. Um, and if you're way down at the bottom, down south, you're libertarian. You're you're all about uh, freedom and liberty and all that. Um, I think Nelson Mandela is. I think a little bit. I think he's a little bit west. He's a little bit on the west side, and he's about. He's about halfway down south. He's kind of at the midpoint between the middle and uh and uh, and south, like full libertarianism. So, so I I guess that's where I stand. That's where, or I should say, that's where I stand now. Uh, Nelson Mandela. Before then, um, I believe uh, Bear, or Bernie Sanders. He was um he was pretty far left. He was pretty far, you know, he was pretty far west. He was pretty close to socialism and communism. But as far as uh, north-south, he was a little tiny bit south. So, but that, I guess that's where I stand on politics. And I, But again, like I said, this is, uh, once I saw these two videos from Mr. Beat, I subbed to his channel immediately. He gets it. He's been, you know, he said what, oh, let me let me back, back up a bit. For those that don't know who Mr. Beat is, he's a, I think he's a social studies teacher. Um, I think he's also a history teacher. I also want to say that he's um. I might be wrong about this, but I thought I saw that he's also um. 
He's also a political science professor. But like I said, I don't have I don't have the information in front of me, and I've only I've only been on this channel one time, so I just caught a glimpse of his uh, about page. But he's definitely a social studies teacher. But anyway, um, but he's he basically he was saying what I've been saying. No system is perfect, and I think I said this on yesterday's cast too. No political system is perfect. As long as you know. As long as the people running the show are human beings, you know, us with all of our flaws and imperfections, all of our vices and virtues and whatnot, you know, all of our strengths and weaknesses, there's going to be, there's going to be some kind of issue, you know, you're, there's going to be, you know, there's going to become some kind of fucking up somewhere, you know, every president's going to have this. But uh, I kind of there's oh there's something else I was thinking about too when watching these. Um, I'm I'm very much speculating on this, but I think uh, if we were to if we were to adopt a certain political model, for some reason, France comes to mind. Whatever whatever model of government they have. That France has, I'd say that that'd be what that'd be the one to that'd be the one to one to draw inspiration from. Um, again, I might be wrong about this, but there was a there was a scene in the movie Patton with George C. Scott. They were uh, like they they conquered France or they conquered Paris, France, and um, Patton was like, Paris, Paris is the most conquered city in the entire world. Or something like that, and I kind of, I kind of started thinking about that too. Um, I'd probably have to look this up in the future, but yeah, I, I, I think that's exactly what happened to France. They're one of the most conquered countries in the world. I think a lot of different, uh, a lot of different nations have invaded that country, and have, you know, taken it over. So, this country here has been on the receiving end of all these different types of government. So yeah, I'll bet these, I mean, I bet these, uh, these French folk over here would probably know a thing or two about running, running, uh, running things. And then according to Bill Maher, these days, that place is one, is one giant labor union. Yeah, that, to me, that strikes me as a country that those are some inmates that could run the asylum. It kind of strikes me as, uh, kind of strikes me as us, my, you know, us at our jobs, you know. I especially, you know, especially uh, at all the jobs I've worked at uh, over the years. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of turnover at the jobs I've worked at, you know, including management. You know, managers are always changing over. So, you know, us, the employees, have been on the receiving end of all types of different managers that have come through our stores. Some of them are cool. Some of them are assholes. Some of them are just, eh, you know. All of them ran things differently, but you know, you know, us at my job now, Walmart, the overnight shift, we're all a bunch of inmates that can run the asylum, you know, because we've been on the receiving end of all these different types of all these different types of managers. All these managers that say and act and do different things, you know, we've seen it all. Or if not, we're going to see it all. I mean, we'll get you know we'll get a new manager in there eventually. You know, they, they quit or they do a yearly rotation or whatever. So yeah, we we are you know through you know through through experience, we know what works and what doesn't. But um again, if I might be wrong about France, but I mean based on this one you know based on this one scene from Patton and and kind of on my own reflection, I think France is I think they're the most conquered country in the world. All these, you know, again, all these different, you know, all these different nations have invaded and conquered and captured this country. So you, you're taught the people, you know, the people have been on the receiving end of all these different types of government. So if there is one country that knows how to govern its people, it's got to be these guys. 
And again, you know, if, if what Bill Maher says is true, this country is now one giant labor union, it seems they know, they already know what works and what doesn't. But again, I don't know the, I don't really know much about the political climate of France. But it, it, was, just, it was just something that struck me as I was watching some of these uh, Mr. Beat videos. So... Okay, but, but, but I'm just kind of glad that this record here is an instrumental record. But yeah, because usually when I do these casts, um, I prefer the music to be instrumental. You know, if they're singing, if they're singing and talking and stuff in there, in these, they're very, very distracting. So, but otherwise, um. I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say. And like I said at the start of this cast, I still have other stuff I gotta get taken care of on here. Like, uh, I have to go to... I have to keep working on my blog post. Oh, and um, one thing I did... I don't want to talk too much about it right now, but one thing I forgot to mention is... uh, I did watch another... Uh, I watched another episode of Dragon Ball. Like, episode 17 or 18 or something. It's the one where um, Master Roshi is training uh, Goku and uh, Krillin, I think his name is, the two kids... He's uh, trading them, but at the same time, he's really checking out this girl, this girl's buttocks. He just gets really, really close to just grabbing her ass. He's like a dirty old man. And and I, I've borne witness to some god awful voice acting, like the girl that does. I think her name is Launch. Um, uh, but this voice actor trying to do her voice kind of reminds me of Daphne. Off of uh, the game Dragon's Lair. It's an arcade game back in the 80s. It's, the Slayer the Dragon use a magic sword. It is really awful sounding voice acting. So yeah, I'm having to endure this as well. So, but otherwise, but otherwise, I gotta, I gotta go ahead and shut down. Like I said, I got, I got some, uh, I got blog work I gotta do, and I got a other assorted shit I gotta get taken care of as well. So. I'll go ahead and bid adieu here. Uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, But until then, oh, thanks again for coming around, and see you all next time. Bye for now.